Abba Pimin said, The reason why we are so greatly tempted is because we do not guard our name and status, as Scripture says. Do we not see that the Savior gave peace to the Canaanite woman, accepting her as she was? And the same for Abigail, because she said to David, Upon me alone be the guilt. The Lord heard her and loved her. Abigail stands for the soul, and David for God. So, when the soul accuses herself before the Lord, the Lord loves her. One day Abba Pimin went with Abba Anub to the district of Dialkos. Arriving at the cemetery, they saw a woman in great sorrow, weeping bitterly. Standing there, they watched her. Going a little further, they met someone, and Abba Pimin asked him, What is this woman weeping so bitterly for? He said, Because her husband is dead, and her son, and her brother. Abba Pimin said to the brother, I tell you, if a man does not mortify all his carnal desires, and acquire compunction like this, he cannot become a monk. Truly the whole of this woman's life and soul are turned to compunction. Abba Pimin said, Do not judge yourself, but live with someone who knows how to behave himself properly. He said that when a brother went to see Abba John the dwarf, he offered him the charity of which the apostle speaks. Charity suffers long and is kind. He said of Abba Pambo that Abba Antony used to say of him, Through fearing God, he caused the Spirit of God to dwell in him. One of the fathers related this about Abba Pimin and his brethren. When they were living in Egypt, their mother wanted to see them and was not able to do so. So she took note of the time when they went to church and went to meet them. But when they saw her, they made a detour and closed the door in her face. But she beat on the door and cried with tears and groans, saying, I must see you, my beloved children. Hearing her, Abba Anub went to Abba Pimin and said to him, What shall we do with this old woman who is weeping against the door? From inside where he was standing, he heard her weeping with many groans, and he said to her, Woman, why are you crying out like this? When she heard his voice, she cried out even more, weeping and saying, I want to see you, my children. What will happen if I do see you? Am I not your mother? Was it not I who suckled you? So I was troubled when I heard your voice. The old man said to her, Would you rather see us here or in the age which is to come? She said to him, If I do not see you here, shall I see you in the age to come? He said to her, If you refrain from seeing us now, you will see us yonder. So she departed full of joy and said, If I shall see you perfectly yonder, I do not want to see you here. A brother asked Abba Pimin, saying, High things, what are they? The old man said to him, Righteousness. Some heretics came to Abba Pimin one day and began to speak evil of the Archbishop of Alexandria, suggesting that he had received the laying on of hands from priests. The old man, who had remained silent till then, called his brother and said, Set the table, give them something to eat, and send them away in peace. Abba Pimin said that a brother who lived with some other brothers asked Abba Bisarion, What ought I to do? The old man said to him, Keep silence, and do not always be comparing yourself with others. He also said, Do not give your heart to that which does not satisfy your heart. He also said, If you take little account of yourself, you will have peace wherever you live. He also said that Abba Sisois said, There is a kind of shame that contains a culpable lack of fear. He also said, When self-will and ease become habitual, they overthrow a man. He also said, 
If you are silent, you will have peace wherever you live. He also said concerning Abba Pior that every day he made a new beginning. A brother asked Abba Pimin, If a brother is involved in a sin and is converted, will God forgive him? The old man said to him, Will not God, who has commanded men to act thus, do as much himself and even more? For God commanded Peter to forgive till seventy times seven. A brother asked Abba Pimin, saying, Is it good to pray? The old man said that Abba Anthony said, This word comes from the mouth of the Lord, who said, Comfort, comfort my people. A brother asked Abba Pimin, Can a man keep all his thoughts in control, and not surrender one to the enemy? The old man said to him, There are some who receive ten and give one. The same brother put the same question to Abba Sisois, who said to him, It is true that there are some who give nothing to the enemy. There was a great hesychast in the mountain of Athlebios. Some thieves fell upon him, and the old man began to cry out. When they heard this, the neighbors seized the robbers and took them to the magistrate, who threw them into prison. The brothers were very sorry about this, and they said, It is through us that they have been put in prison. They got up and went to Abba Pimin to tell him about it. He wrote to the old man, saying, Consider the first betrayal and where it comes from, and then examine the second. In truth, if you had not first failed within, you would not have committed the second betrayal. On hearing Abba Pimin's letter read, for he was renowned in all the district for not coming out of his cell, he arose, went to the city, got the robbers out of prison, and liberated them in public. Abba Pimin said, A monk does not complain of his lot. A monk does not return evil for evil. A monk is not angry. Some old men came to see Abba Pimin and said to him, When we see brothers who are dozing at the Synaxis, shall we rouse them so that they will be watchful? He said to them, For my part, when I see a brother who is dozing, I put his head on my knees and let him rest. It was said of a brother that he had to fight against blasphemy, and he was ashamed to admit it. He went where he heard some great old men lived to see them, in order to open his heart to them, but when he got there, he was ashamed to omit his temptation. So he kept going to see Abba Pimin. The old man saw he was worried, and he was sorry he did not tell him what was wrong. So one day he forestalled him and said, For a long time you have been coming here to tell me what is troubling you, and when you are here you will not tell me about it, but each time you go away unhappy, keeping your thoughts to yourself. Now tell me, my child, what is it all about? He said to him, The demon wars against me to make me blaspheme God, and I am ashamed to say so. So he told him all about it, and immediately he was relieved. The old man said to him, Do not be unhappy, my child, but every time this thought comes to you, say, It is no affair of mine. May your blasphemy remain upon you, Satan, for my soul does not want it. Now everything that the soul does not desire does not long remain. And the brother went away healed. A brother said to Abba Pimin, I see that wherever I go I find support. The old man said to him, Even those who hold a sword in their hands have God who takes pity on them in the present time. If we are courageous, he will have mercy on us. Abba Pimin said, If a man accuses himself, he is protected on all sides. He said that Abba Amonas said, A man may remain for a hundred years in his cell without learning how to live in his cell. Abba Pimin said, If a man has attained to that which the apostle speaks of, to the pure everything is pure. He sees himself less than all creatures. The brother said, How can I deem myself less than a murderer? 
the old man said. When a man has really comprehended this saying, if he sees a man committing a murder, he says, he has only committed this one sin, but I commit sins every day. A brother put the same question to Abba Anub, telling him what Abba Pimin has said. Abba Anub said to him, If a man really affirms this saying, when he sees his brother's faults, he sees that his integrity exceeds his faults. The brother said, What is integrity? The old man replied, Always to accuse himself. A brother said to Abba Pimin, If I fall into a shameful sin, my conscience devours and accuses me, saying, Why have you fallen? The old man said to him, At the moment when a man goes astray, if he says, I have sinned, immediately the sin ceases. A brother asked Abba Pimin, saying, Why do the demons persuade my soul to look up to him who is superior to me and make me despise him who is my inferior? The old man replied, About that the apostle has this to say, In a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and earthenware. And if anyone purifies himself from what is ignoble, then he will be a vessel for noble use, consecrated and useful to the master of the house, ready for any good work. A brother asked Abba Pimin, Why should I not be free to do without manifesting my thoughts to the old man? The old man replied, Abba John the dwarf said, the enemy rejoices over nothing so much as over those who do not manifest their thoughts. A brother said to Abba Pimin, My heart becomes lukewarm when a little suffering comes my way. The old man said to him, Do we not admire Joseph, a young man of seventeen, for enduring his temptation to the end? And God glorified him. Do we not also see Job, how he suffered to the end? and lived in endurance. Temptations cannot destroy hope in God. Abba Pimin said, Life in the monastery demands three things. The first is humility. The next is obedience. And the third, which sets them in motion, and is like a goad, is the work of the monastery. A brother asked Abba Pimin, In the time of my affliction, I looked for something from one of the old men, which would be useful to me, and he gave it to me as a free gift. Now if God comes to my aid, ought I in my turn to give it to others as a free gift, or rather give it back to him who gave it to me? The old man said to him, What is right in the sight of God is for you to give it back to him, for it is his. The brother said, if I return it to him and he does not want it, but he says to me, Go, give it away however you like as a free gift, what shall I do? The old man said to him, This thing belongs to him, but if it is offered to you spontaneously without your asking for it, it belongs to you. Whether he is a monk or a secular person, if he no longer wants what you ask for and gives it you, then it is right for you, with his knowledge, to give it away in his name as a free gift. It was said of Abba Pimin that he never wished to speak after another old man, but that he preferred to praise him in everything he had said. Abba Pimin said, Many of our fathers have become very courageous in asceticism, but in fineness of perception there are very few. One day Abba Isaac was sitting beside Abba Pimin when they heard a cock crow. Abba Isaac said to him, Is it possible to hear that here, Abba? He replied, Isaac, why do you make me talk? You and those like you hear those noises, but the vigilant man does not trouble about them. It was said that if one of the brethren came to see Abba Pimin, the latter used to send him first to Abba Anub, because he was older than he. But Abba Anub would say to them, Go to my brother Pimin, because it is he who has the gift of speaking. 
Whenever Abba Anub came to sit beside Abba Pimin, the latter refused to speak in his presence. A secular man of devout life came to see Abba Pimin. Now it happened that there were other brethren with the old man, asking to hear a word from him. The old man said to the faithful secular, Say a word to the brothers. When he insisted, the secular said, Please excuse me, Abba, I myself have come to learn. But he was urged on by the old man, and so he said, I am secular, I sell vegetables, and do business. I take bundles to pieces, and make smaller ones. I buy cheap, and sell dear. What is more, I do not know how to speak of the scriptures. So I will tell you a parable. A man said to his friends, I want to go see the emperor. Come with me. One friend said to him, I will go with you half the way. Then he said to another friend, Come and go with me to the emperor. And he said to him, I will take you as far as the emperor's palace. He said to a third friend, Come with me to the emperor. He said, I will come and take you to the palace, and I will stay and speak and help you to have access to the emperor. They asked what was the point of the parable. He answered them, The first friend is asceticism, which leads the way. The second is chastity, which takes us to heaven. And the third is almsgiving, which, with confidence, presents us to God our King. The brethren withdrew edified. A brother settled outside his village. It did not return there for many years. He said to the brethren, See how many years it is since I went back to the village, while you often go up there. This was told to Abba Pimin, and the old man said, I used to go back up there at night, and walk all around my village, so that the thought of not having gone up there would not cause me vain glory. A brother said to Abba Pimin, Give me a word. And he said to him, As long as the pot is on the fire, no fly nor any other animal can get near it. But as soon as it is cold, those creatures get inside. So it is for the monk. As long as he lives in spiritual activities, the enemy cannot find a means of overthrowing him. Abba Joseph said of Abba Pimin that he said, This saying which is written in the Gospel, Let him who has no sword sell his mantle and buy one, means this, Let him who is at ease give it up and take the narrow way. Some fathers questioned Abba Pimin, saying, If we see a brother in the act of committing a sin, do you think that we ought to reprove him? The old man said to him, For my part, if I have to go out and I see someone committing a sin, I pass on my way without reproving him. Abba Pimin said, It is written, Give witness of that which your eyes have seen. But I say to you, even if you have touched with your hands, do not give witness. In truth, a brother was deceived in this respect. He thought he saw his brother in the act of sinning with a woman. Greatly incensed, he drew near and kicked them, for he thought it was they, saying, Now stop, how much longer will you go on? Now it turned out that it was some sheaves of corn. That is the reason why I said to you, even if you touch with your hands, do not reprove. A brother asked Abba Pimin, What shall I do? For fornication and anger war against me. The old man said, In this connection David said, I will pierce the lion and I will slay the bear. That is to say, I will cut off anger and I will crush fornication with hard labor. He also said, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. In truth, if someone hears an evil saying, that is, one which harms him, and in his turn he wants to repeat it, he must fight in order not to say it. Or if someone is taken advantage of, and he bears it, without retaliation at all, then he is giving his life for his neighbor." A brother asked Abba Pimin, What is a hypocrite? The old man said to him, 
A hypocrite is he who teaches his neighbor something he makes no effort to do himself. It is written, Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? A brother questioned Abba Pimin, saying, What does it mean to be angry with your brother without cause? He said, If your brother hurts you by his arrogance and you are angry with him because of it, that is getting angry without cause. If he plucks out your right eye and cuts off your right hand and you get angry with him, you are angry without cause. But if he separates you from God, then be angry with him. A brother asked Abba Pimin what he should do about his sins. The old man said to him, He who wishes to purify his faults purifies them with tears, and he who wishes to acquire virtues acquires them with tears. For weeping is the way the scriptures and our fathers give us when they say, Weep! Truly there is no other way than this. A brother questioned Abba Pimin, saying, What does it mean to repent of a fault? The old man said, Not to commit it again in future. This is the reason the righteous were called blameless, for they gave up their faults and became righteous. He also said, The wickedness of men is hidden behind their backs. A brother questioned Abba Pimin, What ought I to do about all the turmoils that trouble me? The old man said to him, In all our afflictions, let us weep in the presence of the goodness of God until he shows mercy on us. The brother asked him, What ought I to do about the sterile affections that I have? He said to him, There are men who tire themselves to death, involving themselves in the friendships of this world. But keep yourself away from all that, and do not get involved in such relationships, and they will be transformed of their own accord. A brother asked Abba Pimin, Can a man be dead? He replied, He who is inclined to sin starts to die, but he who applies himself to good will live and will put it into practice. Abba Pimin said that blessed Abba Antony used to say, The greatest thing a man can do is to throw his faults before the Lord and to expect temptation till his last breath. Abba Pimin was asked for whom this saying is suitable. Do not be anxious about tomorrow. The old man said, It is said for the man who is tempted and who has not much strength, so that he should not be worried, saying to himself, How long must I suffer this temptation? He should rather say every day to himself, Today. He also said, Instructing one's neighbor is for the man who is whole and without passions. For what is the use of building the house of another while destroying one's own? He also said, What is the good of giving oneself to a trade without seeking to learn it? He also said, Everything that goes to excess comes from the demons. He also said, When a man prepares to build a house, he gathers together all he needs to be able to construct it, and he collects different sorts of materials. So it is with us. Let us acquire a little of the virtues. Some fathers asked Abba Pimin, How could Abba Nisterus bear so well with his discipline? Abba Pimin said to them, If I had been in his place, I would even have put a pillow under his head. Abba Anub said, And what would you have said to God? Abba Pimin said, I would have said to him, You have said, First take the log out of your own eye, then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Abba Pimin said, Because of our need to eat and to sleep, we do not see the simple things. He also said, Many become powerful, but few eminent. He also said, groaning, All the virtues come to this house except one, and without that virtue it is hard for a man to stand. Then they asked him what virtue was, and he said, 
for a man to blame himself. Abba Pimin often said, We do not need anything except a vigilant spirit. One of the fathers asked Abba Pimin, Who is he who says, I am a companion of all who fear thee? And the old man said, It is the Holy Spirit who says that. Abba Pimin said that a brother asked Abba Simon, If I come out of my cell and find my brother amusing himself, I amuse myself with him, and if I find him in the act of laughing, I laugh with him. Then when I return to my cell, I am no longer at peace. The old man said to him, So, when you come out of your cell and find people laughing or talking, you want to laugh and talk with them, and when you return to your cell, you expect to find yourself as you were before? The brother said, What should I do? The old man replied, Be watchful inwardly. Be watchful outwardly. Abba Daniel said, We went one day to Abba Pimin and ate together. After we had eaten, he said to us, Go, rest a little, brothers. The brothers went to take a little rest, but I wanted to speak to him privately, so I went to his cell. When he saw me coming, he settled himself as though he were asleep. For that was always the old man's way, to do everything in secret so that no one noticed it. Abba Pimin said, If you have visions or hear voices, do not tell your neighbor about it, for it is a delusion in the battle. He also said, The first time flee, the second time flee, and the third become like a sword. Abba Pimin said to Abba Isaac, Let go of a small part of your righteousness, and in a few days you will be at peace. A brother came to see Abba Pimin, and while several of them were sitting around, he praised a brother for hating evil. Abba Pimin said to the one who had spoken, What does it mean to hate evil? The brother was surprised and found nothing to say in reply. Getting up, he made a prostration before the old man and said, Tell me what hatred of evil is. The old man said to him, Hatred of evil is to hate one's thoughts and to praise one's neighbor. A brother went to see Abba Pimin and said to him, What ought I to do? The old man said to him, Go and join one who says, What do I want? And you will have peace. Abba Joseph related that Abba Isaac said, I was sitting with Abba Pimin one day, and I saw him in ecstasy, and I was on terms of great freedom of speech with him. I prostrated myself before him and begged him, saying, Tell me where you were. He was forced to answer and said, My thought was with St. Mary, the mother of God, as she wept by the cross of the Savior. I wish I could always weep like that. A brother asked Abba Pimin, What can I do about this weight which is crushing me? The old man said to him, In ships, small or large, there are tow ropes which are lashed around the center when the wind is unfavorable to draw the small craft slowly along until God sends the wind. When the sailors notice that darkness is falling, then they throw out anchors so that the vessels may not drift away. A brother asked Abba Pimin about the harm which he was suffering through his thoughts. The old man said to him, In this matter it is like a man who has fire on his left and a cup of water on his right. If the fire kindles, he must take water from the cup and extinguish it. The fire is the enemy's seed, and the water is the act of throwing oneself before God.